brothers and sisters in Christ. On this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church invites all her children throughout the world to come together in vigil of prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, make this new fire holy. Set us aflame with the fire of your love, and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all ages belong to him, and all ages, to him be glory and power, through every age and forever. Amen. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Christ our light, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Christ our light, and in Christ be to God.
choirs of angels, stars and planets, all, all God's, God's people sing and dance, dance. all creation, church of God, all God's people sing and dance. We praise you, Lord of life and death. We glorify your name. All God's people sing and dance. This is the night you set us free, bringing us home in love. Holy night, when you led your people through the fearsome sea. All God's people sing and dance. This is the night you brought your Son through the doors of death. O holy night, when death takes flight and hope is born again. All God's people sing and dance. This is the night our tears of sadness turn to shouts of joy. Holy night, when the choirs of earth sing the songs of heaven. All God's people sing and dance. This is the night when Christ our light makes the darkness bright. All God's people sing and dance. Christ is the life that knows no end. Christ is the love that burns within. Christ is the peace that floods the world. Christ is the Lord who reigns on high. All God's people sing and dance. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, we have begun our song vigil. Let us now listen attentively to the Word of God and hear the record of his saving deeds, recalling how he saved his people in ages past and in the fullness of time sent his Son to be our Redeemer through the Easter celebration. May God bring to perfection in each of us the saving work he has begun. of creation in the book of Genesis. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Then over the coming days God creates the heavens and the earth, land and sea, plants and animals. Then on the fifth day, God said, Let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, and all the creatures that move on the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, 
because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is the image of the unseen God. Through him all things were made. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Recalling the crossing of the Red Sea in Exodus. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming to between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let us get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then Moses stretched his hands again and the sea returns and drowns the Egyptians. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left, that the day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the great power of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my light. He has become my salvation. Lord our God our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery, free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Recalling the Valley of the Dry Bones in the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel is taken by the Spirit of the Lord and sees a valley of dry bones and he is called to prophesy over them and they come together but have no life. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. 
Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Christ is the resurrection and the life. Lord God of our salvation, you speak the words of your scattered people and bring up our life from the valley of death. Breathe your spirit upon your church, that we may live and stand before you, confident in your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Those of us in church, now extinguish our candles.
by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. Don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. 
you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you and for your kingdom, now and always. Amen. Amen. At the end of Good Friday, you may have felt, as the disciples certainly did, where do I go from here? In our different ways, in church, at home, we've journeyed together this week to Jerusalem and by way of an upper room to a hill outside a city wall, to a garden tomb with a stone like an old-fashioned millstone shutting it off. We've read scriptures that remind us of the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. The only language the first Christians had to describe it was that of their own faith tradition, which is why we've been led to think about the Paschal Lamb slain on the day of the Passover, the servant in Isaiah who bore the sins of the people, the Son of Man who first appears in the book of Daniel, and texts that speak of the enthronement of a king. The sacred stories of Israel's past were used to describe sacred moments in the present, and now we're left with a tomb and a stone. There was nothing in the Old Testament about that, but there had, of course, been other divine interventions. The Red Sea parting, multitudes fed in the wilderness, the sick healed, a man who was swallowed by a whale and lived to tell the tale, and even a corpse being brought back to life by Elijah. The disciples took off on that Friday afternoon, those who'd not already beaten a hasty retreat, perhaps to go into hiding or back to the life they knew best by the lakeside in Galilee. Yet some event, some moment of incredible power, brought that little band back together, called them from cowardice to courage, from the safety of hiding to the danger of public witness. Something transformed those squabbling, self-obsessed men of Thursday into a community of such self-confidence that whether they lived or died, whether they were tortured or imprisoned, became less important than their need to tell the story of Jesus, crucified and now risen from the dead. The Easter experience enabled those Jewish men to see God in a completely new way. Suddenly, they understood that Jesus, their master and companion, really was the human face of God. Only an amazing happening could have changed their beliefs and practices. Only such an event could have driven the earliest Christians to gossip the good news so compellingly that it became the basis of the New Testament and of the Christian Church. But of course it was not the words that mattered so much as their lived experience. The experience that proved to them that God is love and those who dwell in love dwell in God and he in them. The words and actions of Jesus took on a whole new meaning in the light of the cross and resurrection. How he had embraced lepers, Samaritans, Gentiles, betrayers, executioners, criminals, and even those who ran away. And as we read these stories, like those first disciples, we learn that God's way 
is not our way. It can be as generous to those who work one hour as to those who've borne the heat of the day. It embraces the prodigal son who wasted his money on reckless living just as much as it embraces the older brother who only did his duty. It values a single lamb that strayed as much as it values the 99 who remained inside in safety. We can never know this side of eternity, just what happened in the still small hours of this night. But the empty tomb makes a sure and certain statement that death could not destroy Jesus because death cannot destroy the love of God. And that means that death cannot destroy us either. The one who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also raise us into God's presence and into eternal life with him. Holy Week may have reminded us that faith does not provide easy answers to the hard questions. Those hard questions, and you will have your own, are part of the mystery of living in an imperfect world. But remember this, the way of faith does not come from proving, it comes from loving. Of course, we'd like to be in a world where marriages are all happy, children are all wanted and secure and there's no abuse, where there isn't a huge gulf between poverty and wealth, a world where people can walk the streets in safety, where all that diminishes human lives has been done away. Of course we would prefer that. But my brothers and sisters, that is just the point. The risen Jesus somehow manages to get hold of us just where we are. As he got hold of Peter and Paul and countless others down the centuries, in a garden at daybreak, in an upper room at night, on a seashore at dawn, in a country village at dusk, in a city street or in a great church like St Mary's, or even in the loneliness of private pain or grief. He gets hold of us just where we are. Jesus, who rose from death to life on this night, is the Christ who raises us to new life through our baptism. He wants to share that new life and all its possibilities with us. And he calls us to pass it on in word and deed in the world he came to save. Our resurrection faith is that Jesus is with us in every circumstance of our day-to-day -day lives. That is the true glory of Easter on earth as in heaven. generously poured upon us, so we recommit ourselves to be people who follow Christ, people who share his risen life through our baptism. So I ask all who are baptised, do you turn away from sin? I do. Do you reject evil? I do. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I do. Do you trust in him as Lord? I do. Brothers and sisters, 
let us affirm with all who are baptised our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? and makes Christ known in the world. I believe in Christ in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of the sadnesses of our current regulations is we can't sprinkle you all with water. We can't shower ourselves with water as a reminder of the generosity of God's love poured out upon us through the new life of Easter we can reflect on that generosity and that love and the gift that water brings us as we remind ourselves of the water that washed the feet, the water of baptism through which we share the love of Christ. And as we pour this water into this bowl, give thanks for that love and life poured upon you and reflect on how you may share that love and life with others. For the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Alleluia. And also with you. Alleluia. So wherever we are, let's rejoice in that peace shared with us and share that peace with others in any way we can.
with unbounded joy we offer you our sacrifice of praise. As we are fed with the bread of heaven, may we know your resurrection power through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also and with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels, archangels, and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpour may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day, when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with Our Lady, Faith, Wilfred, and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, in union with all who celebrate this night, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
grants us peace. For Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. So as we receive communion here, wherever you are, rejoice in this life of Christ given for you, shared with you this day, and pray that you may rejoice and receive his peace in your hearts and lives.
Let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us with your Easter sacraments. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before the final blessing, on behalf of all of us who have shared in this week's celebrations, to Father Nicholas for his reflections throughout the week, which have helped and supported us through these days. And not just this week, but every week, providing us with a reflection and guidance and wisdom. Uh, in these modern days of technology, there is no Easter egg to present to Father Nicholas, but there is something appearing through the internet via an email, which I hope you'll enjoy and value. <laughs> but thank you very much. And thank you to all who prepared the church for today, but particular thanks to Brian and Matt for their music, not just tonight, but throughout the whole of this week's celebrations. They have added an extra depth and wisdom and value to all we have done. Would you please stand? Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us a light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Live in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.